Hello, St. Louis. Welcome to HonestTL.com. You know, it's debatable. Is St. Louis the third most haunted city Is in America? Third? Second most haunted. We have an expert with us, David Reardon, with us today to answer that question. Yeah, St. Louis is actually the fourth most haunted city. Wow. New Orleans is number one by far. Really? And then okay. Savannah, Georgia, um, and um, St. Augustine, Florida are meant to be known to be quite haunted. I had, didn't know Salem, that. Massachusetts, and St. Louis are kind of vying for that fourth and fifth spots. How about that? Um, and it's ranked by different people who do it who are all very unofficial. So yeah, and, if you and, wanted to lie and say we're the most haunted city, you'd probably get away with it and justify it. <laughs> well, what, what about Alton? Is that considered part of St. Louis? Um, yeah, I think for these for those reasons, it sort of is. I think Alton, frankly, is a little bit overrated. Really, um, there are there are clearly spirits there. We're, it's, oh, we're so over that Alton uh, <laughs> scary thing. <laughs> now we met we met Dave Reardon at uh, Morgan Street Brewery when he was giving a talk. Yes, and I never saw somebody enjoy his talk. work. Mm-hmm. As much as this man did, we here. just have to talk uh, over each other all all day. Well, that's today. the only way we're going to get everything in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. David, well, stay out of this, please. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> but it was a haunted historical tour, which I guess you do often, right? Well, I give um, haunted walks, which are generally Tuesdays and Thursdays, like May through October, um, and then come October time, I do them on Fridays and Saturdays because there's so much more demand for everything. And then um, I uh, started this year doing a show. The haunted walks are more. Uh, of what you would think of as a traditional like haunted history you know walk with you know people sometimes seeing spirits and things but it's more about the history of the area and s- scary stuff that's happened you know the cholera epidemic the great fire and stuff but it is more traditional the thing that i started this year which i think is unique in the world i mean i've googled it around i can't find anything like it is uh the haunted show call it unveiled haunts and history which is what you guys came to mm. really a lot of the same stories but rather than walking around we have it in a um in a room at the restaurant. David, where is the most haunted place in the city of St. Louis? Um, I think that, I think you got two answers to that. One is the most haunted house is clear, clearly the Lent Mansion. I mean, that's kind of a stock answer, but it's true. Um, and, and if you want to say that's a haunted place as well, you know, I guess I would vote for that. Well, um, I, 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 I think Clay Morgan Alley is. Yeah, that's yeah. why I asked, because you, you talked about the, the, uh, cholera, the cholera epidemic. Uh, epidemic. And, and, um, you and know, people that... were dropping like flies, and they basically stacked the bodies before they could move them out to Bell Fountain Cemetery on Clay Morgan Alley. And, you know, bodies were stacked up there four and five high where is it's um it's basically between first and second street um right downtown and the landing yeah okay and so Um, what happens like right between like big daddy's restaurant and the spaghetti factory yeah we hear what happens at the lemp all the time you know people see people and you know they have those uh character ghosts that everybody sees again and again what happens down there um there have been some sightings not sightings of ghosts are not as common there certainly not like apparitions as you 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 always report at the lemp mansion um but they, uh, I think people hear things more than anything else there. Um, mm-hmm. It's very, very common. People hear labored breathing, death rattles. I've heard those on a handful of occasions myself. I'm on a couple of tours. People and that have, was just his first that. date. <laughs> <laughs> David, you're such a good storyteller. Do you have a story for us today? Yeah, I, I got one. Um, you know, some of the stories are a little bit long when you're not in front of big but I got one I you probably heard this one it's it's my favorite one and it's a fairly short story so I'll just sort of go with it in 1881 there was a very wealthy man a young man from St. Louis who built himself a three-story brick mansion down on the landing where the arch grounds are now actually and uh, his idea was to uh, live in this beautiful house and practice medicine as a physician and he did so for 47 years. He was a very successful doctor. Not only was he a really good doctor, he was also had a bit of a flair for creative marketing, somewhat like some of the people in this room. And um, what he did is he hung a, a bell outside of his house, and that way in the middle of the night, if somebody needed help, they could ring the bell, he'd get up, get dressed, go downstairs, and attend to their needs as best he could. And he got a lot of patients that way, as you might imagine. He also gained a reputation as someone that you can rely on 24 hours a day. Middle of December, 1887, one o'clock in the morning, that bell rang. He got up, got dressed, went downstairs. There's no one there. He didn't really give it a lot of thought. Uh, went back to bed, went about his business the next day. The next night, one o'clock in the morning, the bell rings. He got up, he got dressed, he went downstairs for the second night in a row. There's no one there. This happens the third night in a row, and he is starting to get a little pissed off. 
So the fourth night, he, he decides he's going to stake it out and hide around the corner of the building. Sure enough, at one o'clock in the morning, that bell rang. He comes charging around the corner, and he is ready for bear. In front of him, though, he sees a little girl, maybe eight years old. Middle of December, was cold. She was barefoot, shivering in thread-worn clothing. He's a kind-hearted, compassionate man. Somebody said, how can I help you, young lady? She said, come quick. My ma's dying. Found, asked her what her name was. She said her name was Hannah. And as they were walking along, he asked her all sorts of other questions. All the little girl would volunteer. Her name was Hannah, and her ma was dying. He went to the worst part of town, up on the second floor of a rat-infested tenement. There on the bed, near death, lay ma. Next to the bed, an old woman in a rocking chair, rocking slowly back and forth. He started to examine the woman. He realized that she really wasn't suffering from any life-threatening disease or conditions. What she was suffering from was exposure and malnutrition. And that's what he told the grandmother. So you know what? What this woman needs is a warm bed, some hot food, and a little tender, loving care. And I think there's a pretty decent chance she'll pull through. We got to get her out of here, though. I want to bring her back to my place and attend to her personally. And I want you and Hannah to come along as well. By the way, where, where is Hannah? Grandmother pointed to a pile of linens in the corner. She's under them sheets. Been dead, oh, about three days. Went over, lifted up the top sheet. Sure enough, there was a little girl he'd seen very much alive just 10 or 15 minutes before decomposing. Now, a lot of people who deal with ghosts on a regular basis think that one of the reasons why ghosts are here, maybe the only reason, is because they've got some unfinished business they need to take care of, something they need to do here on Earth before they can move on to whatever that next place is. And I happen to agree with that. It's really the only way I can explain the story. All I can figure is that Hannah had some very important unfinished business to take care of. She wow. needed to save her ooh, ma's ooh, life. Ooh, it's so spooky. May yeah, she rest in peace. Where can, where can people find you if they want to come see um, you STLhauntedhistory.com. You're just a wonderful storyteller. I'm still well, thank spooked. You. <laughs> but today's segment is presented through the generosity of the Garden Gate Tea Room in Granite City, serving lunch, delicious signature soup, salads, wraps, and sandwiches, and desserts Tuesday through Saturday, dinner on Thursday and Friday. For more information, visit GardenGateTeaRoom.net. And thank you, David Reardon. Hey, thanks for having me.